Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade, and in this video we'll be creating our player object, a very simple one, adding some states to our little square, and finally, what I think will be the most valuable part, talk about and actually refactor some code. But let's jump right into GameMaker. So here we have our player object, which I've already put in the room. It has a sprite, which is just 40 by 40, and the object itself only has a create event and a step event. In the create event, we simply declare a few variables, h speed, v speed, movement speed, jump speed, and graph. Note that jump speed is negative because in Game Maker, positive numbers go down in the y direction and negative numbers will go up. So if we want our character to jump up, we need to set or add a negative number to v speed. And our step event is equally simple. We have a short section of code that checks for inputs. Then we set our H speed, and then we're using these inputs to see whether or not the player is moving left or right. And this is a little trick that is possible in GameMaker only because GameMaker evaluates true and false as one and zero. So if right is true, the value held is actually one, otherwise it's zero. And if left is true, the value is one, otherwise it's zero. This means that we can do mathematical operations on these values. So if right is true and left is false, then that's one minus zero is one times four is four, we move to the right. If left is true and right is false, then that's zero minus one, which is negative one. Negative one times four is negative four, which would mean we move to the left. And obviously if both of these are zero or both of these are one, you'll get zero from this calculation. Zero times anything is zero, so you won't move at all. Then we're checking to see if the jump button is pressed and if we are standing on a solid object. And if both of these things are true, we're setting our V speed to jump speed, again, a negative number. Finally, we're adding gravity to our v-speed and running our moving collide script. And that's actually it. So we can run this and here we go. We have our player object capable of moving about, jumping, and of course colliding with walls, floors, and ceiling. And that's it for now, but we'll revisit the player object in a few tutorials to do things like add health and so on so our enemies can deal damage. But now let's talk about how we're going to update our little square enemy so they can have a few states and interact with the player a bit. So let's create a basic diagram of our little square's new state machine. First, it's gonna have a walk state. This state will basically be what we had before, walk left and right and bounce off of walls. But now it will have an alarm. And when this alarm, alarm zero fires, it will transition to the wait state. In the wait state, it will just sit there and do nothing until alarm one fires, at which point it will switch back to the walk state. However, in both the walk state and the wait state, if it runs into the player or the player runs into it, it will enter the jump state. In the jump state, it will jump up and down until it has no jumps left, at which point it will only return to the wait state. So it can enter the jump state from either the walk state or the wait state, but it will always return to the wait state after jumping. And of course, this is just the decision that I made. You could, for example, allow it to switch back to either state, default it to switching back into the walk state, and so on. It might even be fun to experiment with a couple of these ideas. What else could it do after jumping? But let's jump back over to GameMaker and actually implement this. So here we go. We have our little square. It has a create event, a step event, and an alarm zero and alarm one event. In our create event, we need to initialize a few more variables. These are the jump state variables. We have jump speed, jump max, and jumps remaining, which we will set to jump max in the create event. And then of course we have our new state variable, which will default to walking. And we want to set alarm zero. We'll set it to room speed times three, so three seconds, plus another amount of time ranging from zero to one second. And that's really it for the create event. If we look at our step event, we can see that we have our switch statement. And then outside of our switch statement, we have vSpeed plus equals grav and our moving collide. If we come into our state machine, we can see that there are indeed three states, walking, waiting, and jumping. Our walking state is pretty much what the old walking state was. We have h speed equals move speed times dir, exactly what we had before. Then our turnaround code, if there's a place meeting in the direction that we're going, flip the direction. And then we have two exits from this state. First of all, I just have a note here that one of the exits is an alarm zero, and that this exit from the state will switch over to waiting. But we also have our collision code. So if there is a collision with the player, then we're gonna to switch to the jumping state. We'll turn off our alarm zero, we'll stop moving, we'll switch our state to jumping, reset our jumps remaining to jump max, and then we'll actually jump and decrease the amount of jumps we have remaining. That's it for our walking state, but I do wanna cover alarm zero. Alarm zero 
simply switches the state to waiting, sets our H speed to zero so that we're not moving, and then sets a timer again. Our wait timer is just one second, plus again, a random value ranging from zero to one second. Our waiting state is very simple because you don't do anything in the waiting state. You either let alarm one run and it will switch to walking. So this is actually a typo. Let me fix that. Should say walking. And over here, you can see it switches to walking and resets the alarm. And then it actually has very similar code to our walking state. This part though is a little bit different because in our waiting state, we have alarm one running and our walking state, we have alarm zero. But in both cases, we want to turn that alarm off. Our jumping state is fairly straightforward. If we are on the ground and we still have some jumps, then we keep jumping, decreasing the amount of jumps we have remaining. And once we run out of jumps, we switch back to the waiting state. And that's really it. We have now added a few states to our little square. So here we go. We have our little square. It moves left and right, but occasionally you can see that it enters the wait state where it doesn't do anything. And it will stay there for a random amount of time before beginning to move again. And if we ever run into it, it jumps up and down. And there you go. But now I want to talk about refactoring. So first, what is it? Refactoring means rewriting your code without actually changing what your code does. In other words, even though the code will be different, your game shouldn't run any differently. Instead, the goal is to make your code better, easier to understand, maintain, and most importantly for us, expand. Because as you develop the game, things will change and you want to be able to make those changes easily. And there are a lot of reasons why you might want to rewrite your code so that it does the exact same thing, but better. Often, the first time you figure out how to do something, it's not really the best. And you could accomplish the same thing, but better if you try it again. So this is one of the primary reasons you refactor code is because when you're first typing things out, you just want it to work. You get it working, you get some idea of what you want, and then you think about your code and you can see ways to improve it. But just as often, your code is good when you wrote it. But now something else has changed later on in your project as your game grows and expands. And you will find that your old code doesn't play very well with your new code. Or maybe you even want to do something that your older code doesn't really allow, making it difficult to make more progress in your game development. But hopefully a practical example here will help. Okay, so let's refactor this code. Now, there's a number of different ways we could refactor this, but I think that the thing I'm going to focus on here is removing repeated code. So let's start with this first section right here, our switching to jumping if colliding with the player. We can look at these two sections and see that they're pretty much identical. In fact, with the exception of this line right here, the code is the same. And most of the time when you're writing code, you don't want to repeat yourself. In fact, you may have even heard of the acronym DRY, D-R-Y, don't repeat yourself. This is a great example of a place you want to apply that. So I'm going to turn this into a function. I'm going to call it enter jumping state. I'm going to take all of the repeated code and put it inside that function and then replace that code with the function. I can do that in both places. And there we go. Now, if we want to change something here, we don't have to change it in two places. We can just come over to our function and change it in our function. But now there's even more repeated code. For example, this code right here, V speed equals jump speed jumps remaining minus equal one. That code is here and it's in our enter jump state code. So let's turn this into a function as well. I'm going to call it jump. And again, I'm just going to take the repeated code and move it inside the function. And then I'm going to put that function where the repeated code used to be. And you can already see that this looks a little bit nicer and a little bit clearer. When we enter our jumping state, not only do we stop moving, set our state to jumping and reset the amount of jumps we have, but we jump. And over here, if our jumps are greater than zero, we jump. We don't have to remember now what jumping means. If we need to know that, we can come look at this function. But otherwise, it's very clear and straightforward. But now we have two other pieces of repeated code that I want to turn into functions. And they are our other two places where we're entering a state. We have this code right here, both in our jumping state and in our alarm zero. So let's turn that into a function as well. Same thing as before, write the function, put the code inside of it. And then, oh, I see that I have h speed equals zero in there. And this is why it really should be all in one place. This is a great example. I put in H speed equals zero, which should be the case. When we switch to our waiting state, we want H speed to be set to zero because we don't want to move. But there are two places where we're switching to our waiting state. And I only remember to put it in one of those places. And this really was an actual mistake. I didn't do this on purpose. Having this in a function and then using that function means you are less likely to make those types of mistakes. Now, I also want to do this for the enter walking state because we actually enter the walking state in two places. We enter it in our create event 
and in our alarm one. So now we can replace this and come over here to alarm one and replace this. And there we go. There are of course other ways you could refactor this as I said, but this was one of the most useful ones that I noticed as I was writing it. And it's one of the most common ways to refactor something. So I thought I would go over it in more detail. Refactoring really is important and you should definitely take time to do it in your projects. So there you go. I'll be back next time to cover some of the basic built-in functions that GameMaker has that allow one object to detect another object. This is gonna be very important as we make our enemies more and more complicated. We want them to know about other things in their world. We want them to be able to detect different objects and react to that information. But in the meantime, if anything we did with methods was unfamiliar, check out the link down below.